Hi everybody, welcome back to Flat Water, Flat Earth. Today, we'll be looking at the physical planisphere of the Earth by Philippe Boisch, 1766. So this is a very old azimuthal equidistant flat Earth map made from 1762 to 1766 from the Academy of Sciences in France. You'll see that there are several routes marked on here by ancient French explorers of various dates that are quite old. I'll show you those. And as you can see, this map is originally written in French. So I've taken all the text, translated it, and rebuilt the map with the text on the side in English so that I can post this actual map and people can read it for themselves. Let's begin. This planisphere is the result of the physical views which we reported in the memoirs of the Academy of Sciences, 1762. We made here various additions to make it of a more general utility and give it to apply to the study of geography. Because of all of the ways to consider the Earth, the first must be that which examines its natural or physical state. Now we see in this plan that independent of the Antarctic lands, which are not known to us, it is divided by mountain ranges, expressed by a white lazare, in four parts tilted towards each of the four seas, and that these seas are naturally shared by sea channels, which continue under waters, and whose isles are the summits. This second species of mountains, which has been indicated by a suite of hatching through the seas, makes the continents. This plan still gives the methodical division of rivers, which go to each parts of these seas, from mountain ranges, including the most elevated land, that are like the keys, are here called platforms or plateaus. Explanation of colors. Lands tilted to the sea, lands tilted to the Indian Sea, lands tilted to the Great Sea, lands tilted to the Arctic Glacial Sea, inclined soil whose river waters are lost underground. The point of view of the Earth, which presents itself here from the northern pole, extends regularly to Ecuador or the equator, but the inferior hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, is only seen by a supposed development where we were careful not to disfigure land. This is why we did not think we have to follow the geometric ways absolutely in this regard. So you can see right there that they're admitting that the size of the southern hemisphere should be much larger, but that they had to shrink it in order to fit with what they believe, even though they know it's incorrect. The road which ends our knowledge towards the Antarctic Pole was not made in full by any navigator, and it is only the result of the different parts of routes made by the most celebrated that have advanced the most of this side. We recognize them by marking them with stars which indicate each part of the route with the navigator's name and the year it was undertaken. The considerable ice that many have found there proved that there is in the Antarctic lands a series of high mountains and large rivers with an interior sea, where the ice comes in a certain proportion with what we can scent on the side of the Arctic Pole. The physical map of the Earth, drawn up by Philippe Boisch and advertised with the approval and under the privilege of the Academy of Sciences. It can be found with its details and the analytical tables relating to it in Paris on the key of the Horloge of the Palace, official clockkeeper or timekeeper of the palace, where the geographic works of Guillaume de Lille are distributed, 1766. Now at the top here we see it reads, The Physical Planisphere. With the large mountain ranges which, crossing the earth, naturally divide the land either into high parts or in land of rivers included towards each sea, and share the seas of a sequence of sea mountains indicated by the isles, rocks, or look. Now I'll zoom out and move around the map a bit and let you guys view what's in the map and I'll try to uh, post a place where you can actually download and view this full physical map. The other piece that I have talks about that the summits of the islands are actually underwater mountains, and it talks about that it's flat from one place to another, the ocean. So I'm going to show you another map that follows this one, where it shows that they actually sounded, meaning they used a rope and measured the bottom all the way from Africa to Brazil, some 3,000 miles and that the Earth is flat the entirety of that distance. So stay tuned, you'll see that very shortly. After that, I have quite a few videos coming up where I'll read to you, and they'll be long format. Thanks for watching, guys.